Hi everyone, it's Nat here. Hope you're all well. I'm on to begin my guest creative design team project for Tracy Fox. So I'm using her Dusty Florals Pages kit and the ephemera kit that co um, coordinates with it. So I have here a Bryce Courtney book. It's a nice thick one. So I think that'll be thick enough because I'll probably bulk this one out a bit, I think. So what I'm going to do is gut that first and it's a little bit tall for what I want to, so I'll have to cut it down. Now I do usually use book covers, which you probably all know, because I get so many books, it seems ridiculous to use other things. <laughs> you know, might as well try and recycle a lot of the covers, especially when they're in such good condition and just the right size, really. So I'm going to, geez, they're nice start pages too. I might be able to use them. <laughs> So I'm going to just gut it and take the insides out. So I'll try and do this carefully. I tell you the amount of times I've cut through a spine that I've wanted to use. Double check. That is pretty good. I might take these start pages off and I usually take the first few pages out because you get a lot of blank paper and I reuse that as well in projects. Oops. There's a lot of blank pages at the end of this one. Now it looks like the spine wants to come off as well so I might just help that. Not often I can get a spine off intact, so keep that for some embellishments. So I might put these start pages with the rest of my bits and pieces for this journal because I really like the colour on them. We'll see if we can incorporate them. Okay, so now I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. The rough edges with a pair of scissors that I can use. I've got so many scissors and I should cull them a bit, I think, because I can only tend to use one or two. Now next we want to cut it down. So I have gone ahead and got some rough signatures ready. Although I think I might want, I'm debating whether I might want four signatures and just smaller ones. Not sure. So I might end up doing four small, you know, break these down into another one. So I will use one of these to see how tall we would like it. So what I'll do is just leave about half a centimetre up the top above where our pages will be. So I'm just going to put a pencil mark around about on this side. And I'll measure that. And the ruler says it is one and five, six, one point seven centimeters. One point five, six, seven, yep. So I'll put a mark here at one point seven. It's not look right there, and it's not. <laughs> I think I measured that a bit wrong, so 1.567, there. This is 
right over here. I don't know what I was looking at for those other ones. And I'll just roll a guideline. And I'll get out my big metal ruler. And my craft knife again. Just might make it a tad longer. And I usually just do one side at a time when I do this. I'll just start lightly and then push a bit harder as I start getting through the cover. Dirty cover this one. Repeat the process on the other side. And then of course we have to do it in the middle as well. It's the easier part. So just sort of measure, line up both these sides and then go across. So that is our cover cut down and ready to be covered. All right, so I have a piece of chipboard here and what I wanna do is reinforce my book cover spine. So I'll cut a piece to fit in the spine and I'll cut another piece the same size to sew my signatures into. Now with this piece of chipboard, I just measure I need to leave a couple of millimetres either side so that when I stick my chipboard in and I stick the piece with the signatures in, that the, the um, covers will still close properly. So there needs to be a gap either side here. So I'm mindful of that when I measure. Four and a half centimetres should be perfect. So this piece of chipboard, fortunately, is almost just about nine centimeters. So that means I should be able to get both my pieces from this one piece of chipboard. So that's lucky, isn't it? <laughs> and no, I didn't plan that. I just grabbed it out and thought, hmm, I'll be able to get one. I was hoping I'd get both. So that's, that's great. So also what I should do is measure the length we need So lengthwise, it will go there. I don't want it up too far. So I'll cut that piece off first, and I might as well measure my. My other ruler right in front of me. Don't mind me, I use 10,000 rulers. I like to measure with this one. And I like to cut with this one. <laughs> so we want four and a half centimetres. And four and a half centimetres. So they're both my chipboard pieces ready now. Put that bit to the side. Just double check they're going to fit nicely. 
So that fits in the spine just like that. And then we make sure that we can still do that. May even be a bit loose, but I'll probably be putting some fabric here too and I push the fabric down into these little sections as well to make it neat. So that's going to bulk it up as well. So in the end, we'll have both of these stuck in there. And that fits nicely. And the other thing I like to check is that my signatures are going to not protrude once we've got all of that in. So as you can see, they sit in there really nicely and they don't stick out too much because I, even though they're uneven, I'm hesitant to cut them down just because I like the edges of the pages and that. So I want to leave them. I don't mind them being a bit messy dependent on the type of journal I'm doing. And especially if I stick, I'll probably be sticking some lace and tabs and that sort of thing in this journal. So that then it doesn't stand out so much. But I do like the messy sort of look anyway, so. Really loving these end papers. <laughs> but um, I'll probably be covering them up because once we've cut fabric covered the cover, I'll have to put something on the inside page to cover the ends of the fabric. But we did salvage the other pieces of this, so we'll definitely be using them in here, I'd say. Okay, so as you see, I have got four signatures here that I've put together already. So I'm using the awesome kit pages in my last journal that I made for a guest creative design team project. I ripped all the pages up heaps. I don't think I even have one whole page. <laughs> so I thought with this one, it'd be really nice to keep the pages together. Um, so all I've done with them is just painted some coffee stain on the inside. It doesn't, it didn't turn out very dark either. I must do... I mustn't use enough coffee because I did coffee dyeing and it looks just like my tea dyeing. That's a bit darker. So I'll have to put more coffee in next time. But I don't mind because I can use some ink or cover with book page or whatever I like. I could have actually printed these beautiful papers on this side too. But I do like leaving them blank sometimes and then putting pockets and embellishing them. They're nice sturdy pages on the photo mat, so they hold your embellishments and pockets really well. So I've just used the kit pages, some coffee dyed pages, which I used our plastic tablecloths here in Australia on. We all have the same design here in Australia because they're the only ones we tend to be able to find. Um, and then I used some, it was coffee with acrylic paint to get these pages and they turned out really cool with the little specks and that because the paint didn't mix everywhere but I like the effect that that made. So yes I've just got assortment of those pages for the moment I do want to find some more book pages, music pages, that sort of thing to add to these as well. I've just got to be mindful that I don't make it too bulky. So I did have three signatures, but I pulled them apart and made a fourth signature just because I think it will fit better in the cover. Also, it's a lot easier to sew in when you have uneven signatures. And even though these are even, I'm going to hopefully make a big envelope that's probably going to sit in the middle there. So that will be a fifth signature. So it makes it a lot easier to measure where you want your signatures when you've got your odd signatures. Okay, so I should stop blabbering and get on with sticking my spine piece into reinforce. So I'm just going to use my Helmars fabric glue. This is my go-to glue for everything. The fabric glue and the 450 glue are very similar, so I usually use either one of them. I haven't had any issues with them yet not holding signatures in, which is great. Either that or the people who have my journals haven't told me that their signatures have fallen out yet. <laughs> just stick that in the middle and again I just double check that my pages are going to close and then it looks like it's centered nicely looks good sometimes i clip these down the ends of them while it dries you could put something 
with a bit of weight on there. So now the uh, reinforced spine is stuck in really well. I'm going to put this to the side now to concentrate on something else. I will cover it in a future video, but I basically just wanted to get it reinforced and get the other spine piece so that I can make sure that all my pages and that are going to fit in. So I'll put that to the side. The next thing I want to concentrate on, as I said, I wanted to do, I did the four signatures and I'm going to do an extra one. So we've got odd signatures and I did mention that I wanted to do an envelope. So I've done these before, but I thought it would be perfect to do one in this. I have uh, just recently managed to find um, a few pianola rolls with really nice starts. Now, I was going to get one of the ones that has the black star because they're absolutely beautiful. But this one stuck out to me because it's got the maroon colour. So I think we'll use this. Unfortunately, though, to fit it in the way I want to do it, I'm going to have to cut off these side bits. I managed to just fit in all of this picture part here, but that's all right. But um, first, I want to reinforce this uh, to make it a bit stronger. So, and we'll leave the little, last time I made one, I got so many people telling me off because I actually cut off the part here. <laughs> but I don't think it was in the best condition and I ended up using it somewhere else and something else anyway. So I don't waste the bits that I cut off. Um, but we're going to try and leave it on this time. So to reinforce... I love how it just rolls out of my way. <laughs> to reinforce it, I've got this full scrap paper that's vintage. I picked it up from the secondhand shop, so we're just going to stick that on. Now, usually I'd stick it up this way, but um, the bit we're going to end up with is going to be a bit wider, and I want the paper to go to the edge to reinforce it nicely, especially because we're going to sew some of it. So what I might do, I think, is let me just grab my scissors to hold that down. I might put it along this way. Something like that. So I'll stick that down first because I think the seam we won't see so much because we'll have it folded into the envelope. Um, so yes, that's what I'm thinking of doing. So I think I'll stick this up to about there. And then we'll do the other piece. when you've got magnetic rulers. Now, I'm going to be covering up anyway, so I can use pen. I might be able to see that. It's just a guideline to show me where to put the glue because I'll put the glue on this piece and then stick my paper on top. So I'll just use my Helmars. Things don't tend to bubble too much when I use this. So um, yeah, I like using it for this sort of thing. should do. I'll try not to let it roll and stick on itself. So now we'll position our paper. I think that's all right. That's better. Make sure these edges are stuck down. pretty good. Also helps um, keep the envelope flat which is handy. So now I've got to stick down the next piece. So that's going to go 
flush like that, which works out well. Just do a little few dots there as a guide. paper has come in so handy I've been using it for ages to back all sorts of stuff being full scap gives you that bit of extra length for the longer pieces so I always like looking in their secondhand shops for paper That should be backed quite nicely now. Just take this ruler away. Beautiful. So now I'm going to have to cut around the edges. Which is awkward. And I might do it this way. So I'll finish doing this and then I will be back. So I've cut all around a uh, little envelope piece here. Now I just want to check exactly how wide we can make this. See this piece here only just fits with a couple of millimetres either side into uh, cover. So we're definitely going to have to cut it down the whole way just either side of the dots. So grab a ruler, keep grabbing this metal one, and this one is magnetic. <laughs> I should put that one in something else. <laughs> it's starting to annoy me. So we're looking at, I might be smart and do it so I can see the dots there. So we'll have to cut inside this line that I'm making. Do the same on this side. Keep that piece. It's beautiful. We might be able to use it somewhere else. And we've got to do the same on the other side. So that's going to be the basis for our envelope. It's got just a few marks on it, but they were there beforehand. Now we've got to decide on the length. So we want it, so I've got to be mindful of this little bit at the start too. I think it worked out that this was about 15 centimetres across. 
yeah, 15 centimetres would want it maximum across. Now I should check that in inches, that might help because then we can use our scoreboard. So we'd go five, one, two, three, four, five, six, five and seven eighths. I'm gonna have to be careful doing this. Just giving it a light score. And then we'd go down again. Actually, I'll fold this first. I'm just going steady with it. What I probably should have done is fold the outer and then fold the inner and then stick it on. I find that works a bit better, but that's all right. We'll survive. So that would be the six. So that would be... Just get it folding up a bit. Should work a bit better. Sure, our edges line up. If not, it's more cutting, and we can straighten that up if need be. Okay, and then this bottom bit's a bit long, but I left it long so I can figure out how much we need. So some of that can come off for sure. I'm thinking of folding this down a bit just to add a bit of a lip um, that will make this part a bit sturdier as well. So let's just see if we fold this extra bit over. How much more would need? That's not too bad just like that actually. And then an envelope would look like that, which isn't too bad. And then on the other side, we've got that, which is absolutely beautiful. I think I'm happy with that. So next, I've got to decide where I want to sew. Usually, I sew it together just up here and up here. But I'm debating with this one to sew the whole way around even around up the top there, that would bring this together a bit better as well. So I'd probably start here and take it all the way around and back up to here. So I changed my mind and didn't stencil or anything at this point. I decided it was best to sew around it first because I'm not sure whether I'm going to stencil or stamp or whether I might even stick a picture in here yet because I still have a lot of bits and pieces to hunt up for this journal. But what I did is I had this little bit that was overhung that I folded over. So I stuck that down before I sewed and it's really reinforced this part where we'll be putting things in and out. Um, so that's worked out really nicely. So I found a deep maroon stitch that sort of matched the colors on the envelope and just did a zigzag around the whole lot, which you can see when I open it up all the way around the edge there just not around um, the closure bit here. Now you could magnetize and I did think about it so that it just shuts really nicely, but when it's in the um, journal the way I like to put it, it doesn't sort of fall open anyway because it's in between two signatures and they tend to hold it shut. And the magnets just add more bulk and everything. So I thought I wouldn't bother with that. 
So yes, it's beautiful. I just love making these. It's a shame that you cut the nice um, side pieces off to make it fit. But as I said, I have kept those to do some embellishing with elsewhere. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I had fun. I love making these envelopes. They're so pretty. So we've made a good start. Got to get cracking with it now. So I should be on again in a few days with another video for you all. Um, I hope you have a really good week, what's left of it. And check out Tracy's links. I'll put them all down below. So if you are interested in the Dusty Florals digital kit, then check out her Etsy Love Junk Journals. Um, she's got heaps of cool kits, as most of us already know. Um, yes, have a good rest of the week and I will see you again soon. Bye.